I thought one of us. That's crazy. No six hundred comments. Never happened. They didn't just told everything in this six nine case. He delivery through DHL and had his girlfriend at NYPD cop delivering the game number. What? This shit bigger than me. Oh, this stuff bigger than Nino Brown. Are we live? I didn't even say that. Sorry, guys. Oh, now it's working. We're lit. Oh, now it's working. I don't talk to damn pocket. Oh, now it's working. I don't talk to damn pocket. <laughs> Hello? That never really happened then, this time. Mm -hmm. Sustainability, huh? We also do that at the beginning. People could oh. test it out before we took that option away. So you make a better, you make a full decision if you're gonna do it. Right. It's not showing up on my. Oh, there it is. There we go. Dress it up, make a reel for me. In the top tweet, yeah. Why do you let's see this don't get ridiculous? What do you why do you have to even do that? They didn't justify that they're not trying to make a villain look like a hero. That they're just telling a story like bro, if you don't just shut up and run this eleven twenty five and get some popcorn and icy and put your feet up. <laughs> what up, y'all? What up? What up? Sorry, we didn't um, tell y'all that we we're gonna go live earlier because we didn't know if it would work on the hotel Wi-Fi. So very much apology, very much apologizing, very much apologies. You ready to start? Very much apologize and just let people come in first. So where's the book list? We got a book list. I got a couple things I want to talk about. That I ain't put on the docket. I'm gonna just throw them to you in the air. Okay, I, want, I got something I want to talk about yeah. okay. uh, before you throw it to the air. Let's wait till now. You said you're waiting for people to come in. They're in. We've been oh, sitting here for ten minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, okay. as they join. Okay. Are you ready, sir? Yeah. All right, come on. You ready? <laughs> Give me a broccoli chip. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so. <clears throat> what up? This is your boy, Doughboy. I'm Kevin. And this is another bonus installment of Started Off to the Left, Left right, right, and Left it, right, and we right, are in Memphis, and it, right, it is so humid, right, and I'm right, always sweating, right, and Jim right, was real right, hot, and there's a shake right, set next door, right, but I'm right, drinking right, protein right, shakes and right, eating right, broccoli right. chips. Okay. How you feeling, I want to say something. Okay. So I feel like there's something on your, on your spirit, yeah. man. Well, there is something on my spirit. What's up? Dope Boy does not allow me to chill. What do you mean? If there's ever a time that I am muted, mm -hmm. Dope Boy, what's up, man? What's up with your energy, man? You ain't got any energy, man? You good? You wrong? You sad? I can never just be, like, chilling. You know I'm what? I'm a little tired. I'm, I, 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 I was relaxing for this. I had a tough workout. I walked to Walmart. I walked back. I was chilling. I'm just not all in the... <laughs> if, if I am not at a certain level of energy, Doughboy assumes I am sad. And I am... Why can't I just be relaxing? Why can't I just be chilling? No, you can't. I mean, I don't mean to make you feel a certain type of no, way. No, this is what he does. This is what he does. What's wrong, man? You mad? What you mad? You sad? What you sad? You know, when you're not mad or sad and somebody keeps asking you... And then you get mad because like, bro, I'm, nothing's wrong with me. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> I'm fine. Now something's wrong. Fight me. Now <laughs> I'm blind. There's, I'm, I just want to be chilling. Okay, well, I do apologize, but I actually suffer from that same affliction because my my... Personality is so up all the time. Sometimes yeah. if I'm just, like, What's, so I apologize. I just, you know, I just know you be under a lot of stress. I just be checking on you, man. Cause so in my defense, so I will apologize and say, hey, my bad. But in my defense, Kev, you be wearing a lot of responsibilities. And yes. in my other defense, I've had a really stressful week. 
So I just want to make a sandwich. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just you know the the, the the stresses of being the 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 leader of the team, being responsible for a ton of people. I just be chugging on you because you're my friend. And man. Birmingham ain't selling. That yeah. was stressful. So I just I don't want to. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I ain't coming back to Birmingham. <laughs> it's never a good experience. The first time I went to Birmingham, the first Real Comedians tour, we canceled the tickets. And I talked to a pastor, and he was like, oh, yeah, man. Unless you're, he literally said, unless you're Beyonce or Bruno Mars, no one comes here. So why would we book two shows here? Well, four. <laughs> four, <laughs> technically. Then we came to Birmingham for the this roof. year, mm-hmm. but I made a mistake and. Well, I didn't make a mistake. I was running a promotion for tickets because they weren't selling again. <laughs> but I had put, like, a lot of money on ads on accident. Accidentally, right. I was trying to put $50 a day for five days, 250 <laughs> tops. I accidentally put $500 a day. And then you see the results. So like, the tickets sold out in two days. So I was like, dang, Birmingham is lit. And I realized that it was because you put of the flash money. sale. Plus, I had spent more money than I'd ever spent ads by... <laughs> A lot. So, so I ended up spending like not even a thousand, but I ended up spending like six, seven hundred dollars. And um, so that when I when they um, brought up Birmingham again, I was like, oh yeah, we did well there because, because we sold out. Now listen, but you we forgot that you well. extra money. Well, part of that, and we sold six hundred, which for us is well. But the Stardome holds four hundred and fifty seats. So over the weekend, that's 1,600, 1,700 seats. Oh, that's, to sell. that's the population of Birmingham. It's that, that no way out I'm here. So the club is like, hey, man, this ain't selling. I'm like, bro, this is probably not selling to you because there's nearly 1,600 seats. And I think we sold like almost the same amount we sold last time. We just sold it spread out over four shows. Is that, is that troubling to you at all? Well, it's not really because Birmingham be like this, and Nashville sold out in like two weeks with no ads, and Philly sold out no ads, so it reminds me that big markets do well with less, and small markets take a lot more, and this is why people don't come to small cities, because I was just looking at channels, I showed Josh, I was looking at Chances Tour, Mm -hmm. he only went to like 20 of the cities that we went to, they only go to the big ones, L.A., they don't even go to San Diego. I'll pull it up. They go to L.A., Oakland, one of those cities. They don't even go to Seattle half the time. They never uh, go to Sacramento. No, no. You know, I know. Uh, Dallas, Houston. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, what's that? Chicago. Oh, he went to San Diego. Uh, he went to San Francisco instead of L.A. I mean, instead of San Diego. I mean, instead of Oakland, sorry. Phoenix, Denver, Austin, Houston, Nashville, Atlanta, Charlotte. Cleveland, Detroit, New York, Toronto, Boston, Philly, DC. These are the big Yeah, then like the, the, the cities that are a little smaller are Phoenix, Kansas City, Milwaukee, um, Louisville, and Vegas. So, so they're going, he's going to mostly highly populated. Yes, and it makes that I've been watching people Drake, Migos, Beyonce. Um, Bruno Mars, it's you, Lizzo, Toby, it's those cities. Mm-hmm. Toby did those cities, oh, only the big ones, about 20 mm-hmm. in March and April, and then he was done with this tour, and then he went back again in uh, November and December. Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, maybe I should just do that. Problem with comedy is, though, you have to warm up your set. Like, you can't go to Houston with a brand new hour that hasn't been worked out. So I have to do the small cities, but the small cities, I'm not as worried about selling out because it's like Albany and Syracuse, mm-hmm. like, bro, ain't no way. I just don't have that many fans. <laughs> but my fans where they are, mm-hmm. and then it's funny, I was at Walmart, I got stopped by three people in Memphis who were like, man, heard about the show, can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> One yeah. people, they had like twins. Remember the dude last night? He was like, the lady at the rental car spot. Oh. Oh. Listen, listen. Public PSA. You listen to this. Public PSA. <laughs> we totally understand that we got fans and y'all rock with us and stuff. But if in the in the event that we come to a spot and like maybe it's your job, man, just please don't be super. I, I was like highly irritated. And I don't normally get here no. irritated. It was also midnight. It was midnight. We yeah. we get into the airport and this lady. I won't even say the name of the place. So I don't want to you know out nobody like that. But we go. Don't you Lizzo this? I won't do that. So the lady was just. 
I wouldn't say that she was rude. She, I think she knew who we were. And no, she, she just kind of kept, like, the banter became too much. And it was like, man, it's midnight. Can we get this car? All I say is don't let your banter... Interfere with you job. doing your job. Yes. I was don't at one point like... Don't make... Because she was like... Pulling, so we picked up the first car. It smelled like smoke. And it was smoke <laughs> central. I mean, it smelled like... They tested cigarettes. Like they were just like... <laughs> oh, it's ready. <laughs> like, so I... When they were pulling out, I'm like, Hey, are we going to get charged for this? Because this car is all smoked out. And she was like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was like, oh, nice. I was like, well... You know, can we switch the car? She was like, okay... She put us in this other van. But it was just like and joke after like, joke. Uh, like, are you a comedian? I know your voice. <laughs> it's annoying. I was just like. Because we still just, had like 25 minute, 25 minute drive. We're all hungry, tired. The plane was the pl stupid hot. I was sitting next to a lady with a. You, did you hear the screaming toddler? Uh, I didn't go all the way to first class. Screaming. I. There's a little sound barrier between first class Man, and listen, coach. you be in first class during the real comedians, get in the back and coach with us during this R&R &R trip. I am accepting it's character every, building. every first class of bump. That's why when you go to like Memphis and uh, cities that are not like the main, my chance it's of getting bumped up is so high. This has been a main event. you go to Atlanta, you sit in the back. You're cooked. I'm coming back from this trip, I'm in the middle seat in comfort. Did you guys, How dare they? Did you get, your, did you get like your drink service before we did? We didn't get our drinks to like hour two. Uh, bro. No, no yeah. I didn't either. I didn't oh, either. Okay. Like third quarter. There was a lot of, uh, flight. We was a lot of tournaments. I was, Do you ever really think like, what if this plane goes down? I think really. that sometimes. Because when it was, I was just like, I hope not I don't have to jump on the on, on takeoff, we got some. I was like, this this actually your might be plane, the time we go into the ocean. Your plane is more likely to crash during takeoff and landing. So when it's really? turbulent, yes. Okay. Almost every plane crash that you ever heard. I felt like a drop in a day. bank left, and I was like, yeah, yeah. this is all right. They very rarely just fall out of the sky because they're, 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 they're big floating. gliders. They're big gliders. If, they, if you lost all four engines, you could glide for hundreds of miles. And, you know, I was, like, stupid as a kid. I used to always think, like, well, what if the engine goes, like, like how car engines break down? What if an airplane engine breaks? It's like, <laughs> ah. That happens. Really? Yeah, birds. Uh, that's what happened in the, the one where the guy landed in the Hudson River. Mm-hmm. It was a flock of geese uh, crashed or flew into the engine, and it like like exploded. And he had to land in the ocean. Oh, so I, I was valid in that fear. No, no, that uh -oh. birds is a you, you, is a big thing. You would think they'd have some kind of fail safe that would you prevent would. stuff from flying into an engine thirty two thousand feet in the air. And it was a lot of birds. It wasn't just you one. said geese, so that's more than one. those are big those are big right. bodies. Yeah. So but so part of my fear is. The agent set this up, and the way comedy clubs are, how well you sell determines where, the, like, the clubs talk. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, man, he didn't sell well in Birmingham. You, you should either not bring him or lower a guarantee for him because he didn't sell well. When we do the real real comedians, the social media tour, and then I had to talk to my agent, and I didn't even know this. So one of the best parts about owning the ticketing is you can, if a, if a, tick, if a city's not selling well, mm -hmm. you can run promotions. Right. I, and I used to do 24-hour sales, 48-hour sales, and that would work, you know, because mm -hmm. after 48 hours, it goes back to regular price. People, are, if they're thinking about it, they'll... they'll so you can push it. the tempo. You, you can, can control the tempo. tempo. No. But with the clubs, I have no say-so, right? So I had my agent. I'm like, bro, like, I'm not used to not having control. He's like, oh, you can run sales and promos. We just got to hit the club up. I was like, bro, this now, whole time? Why would you not say that? The two weeks we've been having this conversation. Yes. So, and the other part is, and here's the biggest problem. Your amount of fans and the amount of like how big the city is and surrounding areas really affects your sales. So like Birmingham, England, mm -hmm. there's only so much amount of money you can run on ads because you don't have a lot of fan base there and people are not close. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you do like DC, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. all those people there that are fans, all those people around there, and that's why those cities, areas. yeah, and that's why those cities sell so well. Like Raleigh and Charlotte, people mm -hmm. only usually go to one of those. Maybe South Carolina, they will go to Columbia. Mm -hmm. And then if you live in like Augusta, like Augusta, you know what the I mean? Outskirts. Like, yeah, you know you have to drive. Like if you every time you go to a real small town was in Huntsville, he was like, Oh yeah, we go to this dude said we go to Nashville to go to the Cheesecake Factory. I was like, Bro, if Nashville you an hour and a half. For some the Cheesecake Factory. The pumpkin nickel bread didn't be fired, huh? <laughs> I crossed that. That's road. a small that town. If oh. you gotta go out of town to just it. to go to just to the Cheesecake <laughs> Factory. I'd make that drive for that brown yeah. bed if it I would have But just the fact not. that you have to do that makes you probably reconsider the city that you're living in. I don't want to yeah. have to go an hour and a half just for some. But then you got to weigh with the cost of living and your family. That is the biggest thing. Cost yeah. of living and people's family being there. Mm -hmm. 
Because I know when I had small kids and my mom was living in my city and was helping me with the kids, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be in no rush to move. Man, yeah. especially you fill up of, your tank out here for a dollar. Oh, it's crazy. There's something cool about just smaller city living sometimes. Yeah. It's not as... I can get it. Yeah. I, now, I don't think I would do it now, but mm. later in life, I could see myself being like, well, I live way out here. Don't come. Don't <laughs> bother me. And also, there's the... There's the we haven't done the righteous and righteous show. That's the thing I'm most worried. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna hold you. I have a confession. I ain't nervous. <laughs> I I don't know how this is gonna play. I don't either. We've never you done this. Film a lot of it. We, the, I mean, the fact that we have a successful podcast with a ton of fans is great. Yeah. But this is something that we do. We've been doing it since what last week of November, like yeah. almost a year. Like you can start to you know get reps on that. But we've never done a podcast. I'm like me and Kev actually went out and watched somebody's show and just got like. Just to see how these things yeah. are, like, I'm a little... Man, <laughs> my wife feel. was like, chill, it's a podcast, all people, she's been to a podcast live show. So essentially what she's saying is, chill, something you've never done before in your life, go do it and yeah. we'll go well. Well, she was like, you're just doing too much. She, mm-hmm. she was like, you don't even need to do stand-up. She was like, you can sit up there and do your Ratchet Ratchet right. show, but the performer in me is like, you gotta give him a little more. I just want people to feel like, man, that was great. Yeah, yeah, because we're we, we like to over promise. I mean, yeah. over under promise, over deliver. Yeah. You coming for this, but we finna get y'all to. Yeah, I want people to be like, man, this is great. Like, like uh, eighty five South, man, their their live show. Be... And they're getting big. Shout out to the eighty five South show, definitely friends. I thought podcast. you were gonna hit Carlos. I he hit me back, man. <laughs> Did he hit you? Know, What'd man. you say? How you gonna say, hey, man? I want to get you with a podcast, play bot. He ain't, with no response? No response. I mean, I don't know. I may have an old number on him. I don't know. But then you like me liking my pictures and stuff. I, I shout out to Carlos, but man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but did you see the text message? I want you to come be my friend publicly. Um, but shout out to those guys. But they're like they're doing bigger and bigger spots, and they've been doing it for a couple years. Right. So I, I think I here, here's how I feel, and this is kind of where I'll leave it. I'm going to, and I know you will do, and it's also I'm doing new material as well. Or not necessarily Me too. New, some tell newer stories. Material, yeah, some newer material, but stuff that is not uh, worked out mm-hmm. in in the sense in the sense of like by the end Polish, of the tour it was right. it was it was squeaky clean. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, hopefully they're fans of us and they just want to see have a good time. Do you, do you think it's like how do you think it's going to be different from real comedians or social media? Because with that, you got Tony, you got Tahir. You got That's this. a lot easier because it's just, you're on stage by yourself. And you have a set amount of time. And you have your time. This is the just... only thing you can worry about is where the, whether they laugh at your jokes or not. Mm-hmm. But but the unsurety of like how alive, like do we stand up? Do we sit in stools? I don't do these things. I feel like we should stand up because that would be less energy if we're sitting down. What about when we do the stand up? Are we just going to stand up and do it like we normally do? Or are you going to be on stage when I do mine? That's the weird thing. Like, I'm going to introduce you. Then where do I go? Like, <laughs> <laughs> then I got to introduce you. We're doomed. I told you we should do a dress rehearsal. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> Did we tell him, Josh? We have talked about this. I mean, we've been saying this. There's yeah. no way to dress rehearse that. What are you going to do? Okay, I do my thing. You want to do a dressing rehearsal. <laughs> like, Hold stop. on. One, one thing I want to say. I have something. I have, I have things on my heart today. Big things. Why or what? You know what I'm going to talk about them now? Yeah. It has nothing to do with the toy. I got hey, Hold on, let's wait. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, before we switch. I'm testing my boob. <laughs> before we go all the way, I want to get in that uh, thing. People say, sit down, sit down. Y'all, we're doing an interactive version of the podcast. That's kind of what we have set up. Um, kid sister says, uh, just chill, grab a seat, and act like it's a bonus episode. Right. Uh, okay. But in front of people. It would be weird for y'all to be standing the whole time. Sit down for the podcast part. Y'all should relax like you normally are. I think y'all overthinking this. Keep it chill. Y'all good. Oh, okay. Well, right. Shoot, these are the people that will tell us the truth. I love the right pack. Keep that same energy when we get booed off the stage. Get out of here. Don't get booed off the stage. I don't know, man. Oh, uh, yeah. No, Columbia was great. And that's the thing. Somebody said thank you for mentioning Columbia. The two times I've been to Columbia, they've so well. And I think there's a certain one night only feel like if you miss it, you miss it. Uh-huh. When there's too many shows, you're like, I'll go this there that day, and maybe I won't go. <laughs> but it's one night, you're like, I gotta go. <laughs> you gotta go or you I miss think it. I think my nervousness will be I think the only show I will be supremely nervous about is tonight. Because yeah. it's the first time. Yeah. Once I get it and I feel it, I'm like, oh, because I can do the dance, you gotta show me the steps. 
because that's how I operate in life. All but right. no, let me tell you about the personal heart. thing. What's on your heart? I like, I'm, so I cried the other day and I'm trying not to get emotional because it's like a really good. So, you know, today, shout out, first of all, shout out to my daughter, Kiara. Aww. Today's her 14th birthday. Happy birthday. But, um, like, you ever just watch your kids sleep sometimes? All the time. So, I'm watching her sleep I mean, the other day and it really, it really hit me. I kiss them when they sleep. They don't know. <laughs> I kiss JoJo when he sleeps all the time so he cannot fight me. <laughs> Oh, he'd be ready to fire off on you. He'd be, no, no, kid. But when you sleep, I'd be like. So I go in there and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at her and she's asleep. And then I got so emotional because I don't have a baby anymore, and I've had a baby for the past fourteen years. Like you almost had one last year. Yeah, yeah, almost double up. But the thing is, is that I don't know how to deal with the fact that she's no longer like. A little child, like, I can leave her by herself at the house. Like, she can cook Maybe stuff. She probably prefers it now. Yeah, like she has her own life, her own set of ideas. Like, I, I dropped her off at the football game the other day. I was like, "You want me to go in here and sit with you?" She's like, "No, I'm good. I'm, you know, I'm probably catching you know, bumping just some of my friends." Like, she's very confident, and I'm just like, I love the stage that she's going into her life right now. Mm -hmm. But it finally dawned on me, like, you don't have a kid anymore. You have a young adult. And she's been with you for how long? That's what I'm saying. I just got her in August. But this is the thing that hurt me and made me cry. You're talking about it like she was a puppy. I just got her. <laughs> but the thing, I just got her full time. The thing is, is that in the pursuit of this, I moved out here when she was four years old. Mm -hmm. So I've been gone for the past 10 years. And that's like, you made me realize something when we talked the other day. I feel like that's why I'm kind of overcompensating, trying to like make up for with lost the time. And the allowance. And I'm about to buy her a dog. It's, it's a whole get her, Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're not just going to brush past that. Why? $2,000. <laughs> What kind of a I dog? Want my daughter to have you a dog. are spending too much money. Okay, but I want First my daughter to have a dog. Why are you buying a dog? You should be adopting from a shelter. There's two thousand no dollars. Was it a French bulldog? No, a uh, teacup Yorkie. No way. You are spending entirely too much. Two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars for a dog. You might change your mind. No, man. So adopt a dog. For free? Adopt a dog or okay. take a dog from the shelter. Well, I want to get her a dog. So forget the fact that okay, but I want to get her a dog, but. I don't know, man. I just, it just made me like, do you ever think about that when you, because you know, your son's getting the deep voice like, man, somebody not kids said no more. So Zay Zay was convinced his voice wasn't deep, right? Mm -hmm. I showed him this ADB video from last year on uh, Mother's Day. They did dad jokes with Melissa uh -huh. and his voice was like super tiny. And it, I promise you, it felt like it cracked over a weekend. Bro. It, cra like, it, I, cracked it cracked when they, when they went over, uh, was it Chicago or, or, or uh, when they go, went to North Carolina? I felt like it yes, was one of those it was weekends. Like one of those weekends, like not even two or three months ago, and it had been like dropping slowly, but he always was still like, and then it cracked. And JoJo's voice is still like when you call JoJo, me and Melissa do this to him all the time. He hasn't figured it out. We call him for no reason, just because he answers. He's like, yes, because his voice is so small still. <laughs> right. And Isaiah, like you remember when you were turning 13, 14, you would try to talk deep mm -hmm. on purpose. Like he's not even doing this. It's just happening. He's just. <laughs> this is this is when me and Kev were texting each other the other day, and this is when I think when I when I put the metaphor to him like this, I think this is when you finally got it. Me and Kev have been friends. We're going on five years now. So I mentioned 2014. The amount of time that you and I have known each other, if you just take that same amount of time and apply it forward. Kiara's gonna be 19 in college. Uh, all I do <laughs> is that. You know what I'm saying? I do that literally. Zay's gonna be. Off, that's what my mind. So Zay just turned 13. Man. And I was like, when he's, first of all, he's starting high school next year. She, right? Kiara's a freshman. So I was like, we, we, we've been getting them babysitters. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, bro, no. Don't Why? Know. Like we only get them babysitters now mm -hmm. if they have a school night and we're not we're gonna get home after because they and it's really more for Joe because he'd be like kind of uncomfortable if there's no adult around. But Isaiah, man, they they, Bro, they I, don't need much. When I was when when <laughs> you've all you always been my best friend for a ton of reasons. But when you looked out for me and let me babysit the kids at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. like when I had quit my job and that was just so clutch in my life. They don't need a babysitter. Bro, like, if you get, if you have the good. refrigerator full of food and the cabinets full of food and the Wi-Fi on, they, they wouldn't even know you're not home. I would just go in their room once an hour. Is everybody good? You good? Like, bro, they'll stay in there and fart and chill. And cool. For they are stupid low maintenance, and that's what I realized. Like as a parent, when your kids are young, parenting requires a lot of work. Yeah. Changing diapers, birth yes. uh, uh picking them up, putting them to sleep. Why? Like literally, everything needs to be done. They need us and less and less, and you don't even know it until they just stop needing they need you. you. Then they don't need you at all. Like it was I, the other day. I woke up late, and because we we leave, I leave to take care of school at seven thirty. I woke up at seven ten, 
Because I always go in there and like wake her up. I'm panicked. <gasps> Oh, let me, okay, like, I know she's safe. I get up. She's just in there doing her hair. Like she's very Dude. self sufficient. She doesn't need me for anything. Let me tell you. So this <laughs> has a little black boy curl uh, thing, right? So his barber did it the first time, and then he showed me how to do it. Because mm-hmm. the little thing, you would never think that it can do to hair curls, yeah. the way it does. Mm-hmm. So first two weeks, I'm showing him how to do it, and I got to do it. He can't get it right. Mm-hmm. Yesterday morning, he came in, and I was like, "You need me to do your? You have done it." It looks good. I'm telling Because I was telling him, like, yo, you got to do it on your own. It's like, it's your thing. You right. got to wet your hair. You got to put the moisturizer in it. And you got to practice because if I'm not home, you got to get, you know. So it's like, it it's stupid a little bit because like, you train them to, to not need you. And then but when you they want need them you, to like, need you, like, I want to pick you up. Bruh, <laughs> let me ask you this. Because you've been in your children's lives 100% of the time. They've been with you 100%. I didn't have that. I was living in LA, Carol, in Sacramento, mm-hmm. so it was different. Does now that you understand that you we're on a clock for kids now, like they're they're almost adults. Does it make you want more kids? Because no, now, and to me, not. I think because I miss so much, I I'm starting to have like baby people. Like I want a child. Dude. No, I, the, you your your job as a parent is to the best part of my life of uh, to prevent that is having the baby mm-hmm. over. But she's a terrible person. Mm-hmm. She's a terror. She's super sweet and then she's super moody. Who's she's this the baby. No, Greg. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, and then when she don't sleep and she whines, I'll be like, because oh, you forget that. about all those other moments of staying. And even if you have another baby now, you're just gonna you're delaying the inevitable. She's gonna, gonna go up too. You're gonna just die while your kid's young. Yeah. I, I don't want to be the like. I have worked hard to be like, bro. My kids should be able to stay home, both of them by themselves. Overnight in like a year or two. I just man, and I then know. it's the benefit of being like, oh, I can go out of town. I can stay out late. I can do you know that part of my life. Mm-hmm. And it's the sadness of being like, bro, all you gonna do is be raised and then leave. Tell you, man, it, it it really made it really put life in perspective for me. Like it doesn't. Cause I remember the day I seen her on an ultrasound. Saw her. Saw her. I just want to. I seen you be it. Better. I want you <laughs> so, to be better. I like so just to see that like you can I'm, you you can say reclamative. But then you'll say, I've seen her. I'm, I'm, I'm working to be a better man. Reclamative? That was a great word. It was four syllables. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't heard it. And they'd be like, I see the baby. I, I, I like it. And the Patriots take on reclamative projects. <laughs> Do you know words or no? Because usually people don't speak well. They don't know none of them words. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real dichotomy. I'm highs and lows. You know what I'm saying? But, um, but no, it's so... The I, reality I, of dope words. Yes. Remember your album supposed to be reality right? of dope. Come One of years is on the way. Why are you always making album proclamations that don't come out? I'm so sensitive about my music. What's the point? I don't. It's Do you like, want to make it for pure joy? You're no, 40, I'm though. Put it out. I'm putting it out this year. You I have a whole myself. album that you didn't even release. I know. Put it out I right know. now. Today? Yes. <laughs> just post what, what is going to happen. People aren't going to like it. Just accept <laughs> that. Not, not, not all of it. Right. Like, I get it. Right. Because you put your but heart what are you, out there. What are you sensitive about, though? Comedy? He still does. Kevin's a prime though. example of just I don't let, posting yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I'm prime example. He's I just the get example. on you because you you let it happen too much and to affect you. Oh no, just with music though. I'm not like that with anything else. You be in the comments defending your com- comedic. Side comedy. no, no, not, I do need to relax. You, if, or you just, or you could just make music for fun. I want but to my thing him. with you don't though. Yeah, I just don't. Want you, to you like don't. It. Right. No, because <laughs> the thing, bro, listen. Accept that somebody's not gonna like it. Are you? Are, do you want every single? Do you even think it's humanly possible that every single person's gonna like it? Absolutely. No. So just accept that some people aren't gonna like it. Who cares? Oh, don't be over there just. Like, oh, where's the next job? Where's the next guy's he take? No, that's don't worry about. That's thing, not though. his. 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 That's not the. It's not a one to one thing. He's not putting it out because he hope people don't like it. He doesn't want it. He doesn't do it because he wants it to be perfect and beautiful, and he feels like it's not worthy of putting it up unless it's perfect. You are afraid of the reaction of the re- the reaction of people. Josh has never has that fear. Those are separate fears. All I'm saying is free yourself from the from that you give you're giving a, a random person too much power it's over paralyzing. your paralyzing. It's paralyzing your creativeness. You're gonna pour over every verse, every lyric to the point where you're spending money and, and you, I have been spending money. You've been spending <coughs> top dollar and you don't even you make so either you make it for people and you put it out for them to enjoy or not enjoy, or you make it for your own benefit. Just, but you should. Your headphones. Yeah, yeah, but if you do that, you shouldn't spend a lot of money doing that. Right. You you know what I'm saying? Like I play the piano. I want to play the bass. 
for my sheer enjoyment. People be like, Kev, you're trash. Like, I, and that's fine because <laughs> right. I'm not a great piano player, but I do it because I want to express myself creatively and I like playing music. Like, but it's never my intention to release a piano album or be a professional musician. Right. right, right. So just accept that or shut up about it. Put it out or shut up. Put it out or shut It'll up. Be out you before got, Christmas. All, all that. Put the other one out. What's the I one got album one of you? The, the, uh, this EP ain't it, Chief. The yeah. one that you're going to drop for. How, how many songs do you have? Nine. On that. I have a total of Where like, are they? In my computer. They're just sitting there? Yeah. Bro, put them on your YouTube page. Okay. Now. I got you. Today. I don't, I don't have my laptop here, but I got you. When you get home, I got track you. one, track two. Let's put it up. Let's Come on, man. Let your fans enjoy it. Your Let's hands are sweaty. Because it's hot in here. <laughs> she got the, 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 the marketer on, hell. No, we had to turn the air off so y'all could hear it. All right. Um, and I bet they better be out. I got you. That whole album better be out this month. I when you, you get home, just just put it up. Just put it up. Just put it up. I got you. Before, All of the songs you have, just put them up. You're right. You're absolutely right. And thank you for that. Hold on. So, let's get into the comments. Yeah, man. Don't be letting yeah, your... Testimony? Huh? Did it even come out? What? Testimony? What's me? Oh, oh, oh the, the say his name? Yeah. No, I haven't put, I haven't put none of it out. Dude. I'm sorry, Kevin. I'm sensitive. I don't want people to not like it. I'll cry. Bro. Chance made, what was the first one? 10 Day? 10 Day. 10 day. Acid Rap. He made 10, 10 Day over his 10 Day suspension. Then Acid Rap. Then Acid Rap. Then Coloring then, Book. Yeah. Then The Big Day. The Big Day was a poop sandwich. You got to live with that. I'm telling you guys, put it out. You're right. Yeah. Like, totally right. Because people, there still be some tracks on it that people like. You don't even know what it will be. Hey man, I want to show you something. Um, Toby released this his music really I, I, consistently. One, 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 one twisted Sunday. Yeah. This little girl. This is the current picture on his Instagram. Y'all want to see? It's the current picture on his Instagram. This little girl. This little girl has um. Oh shit! Uh, the Matrix. Uh, anyway, I'll do it on this one. This little girl has cancer, leukemia, mm -hmm. and they play his music for her to make her like, like turn up. Like when she has a bad day, she like you know listens to his music. That's powerful. And that's uh, that's. I mean, you might not get you might not get that thing like that exact thing. You know what that song that you made we'll you do to people. Right. Yeah. Are you right? And, I, and it's just, it just be fear. And I hate being paralyzed by fear over anything. Bro, you yeah. are 40 years old. Nothing is going to happen to you. Right. If somebody, bro, if you, what, what's the best album you've ever heard? Jay-Z's Blueprint. Someone don't like that. A lot of people don't like Jay-Z, period. Don't like his music at all. But that's one person. That's that's an outlier. And they're going to comment on your video. They're going to thumbs down. They're going to say, no, you can't rap. So now on Twitter you can hide hide replies, man. Bro, just dub that. That's what I've been doing lately. I just I be feeling like just like I'm the the overseer of it all. They be saying stuff. I be like, yeah. nope, you never said it. Yeah. Um. So speaking of rappers who snitched, <laughs> <laughs> um, Takashi Six Nine has made a statement because today is the sentencing day. Peep this, dog. He had a mandatory minimum of forty seven years. But he, they said if you get up there and sing, we'll see what type of deal we'll cut you. So he wasn't guaranteed anything. So he had to take that risk. Like just go up there and, and sing. he could have still been eating. He years. was telling on everybody. Yeah, I remember. He so so basically now it's come out on TMZ that he is refusing witness protection when he gets out, so he can get his music career started. Let's How do you feel about does. that? I think he's completely safe. I think yeah, I think yeah. Then he can hide out in plain sight. Those rappers. The gang people that he was with, mm -hmm. they wanted to be rappers. Absolutely. They knew he was not like a part of them. That's the thing I do hate about that. I feel like he 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 they knew he was never a gangbanger. No. He wasn't that. He probably was up from around the way. He started popping. They were like, oh, we can they got him involved. And now mind you, I'm not making an excuse for him. He's a grown man. He made yeah. decisions. But I feel like he was like kind of targeted and then they robbed him for him and they were trying to kill him. It's like, bro, he wasn't even a part of what y'all was doing. I don't think anything is going to happen to him. I think he. I, I, I think, think he'll he, be a bigger star than ever. I think he will be just fine. I think he can like make I a movie about his life. I think he'll be safe. Mm -hmm. I think the world won't care if he if if Fifi worked. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be fine. Like, go first, number one. Like, oh, you, you gonna get snitched? They gonna be after you? Yeah, like, not. like the, the streets is a myth. Like nobody care. Like I mean, the streets is for the streets, but regular people, like, I don't. I don't care like regular people do not have street 
code. Exactly. Like, we don't live by that. Like, even in the street code, they're mm-hmm. like, citizen. this stuff don't apply to citizens, mm-hmm. you know, re- regular citizens. Um, but, like, if I saw him, I mean, I wouldn't... I, wouldn't, I mean, I, I actually have a lot of empathy for the kid. I'm like, if, if somebody pulled a gun on you, made you go in your house and get a million dollars worth of jewelry so they didn't kill you, I'd probably tell them that person, too. <laughs> I'd be like, let me tell you everything he did outside of rob me for my jewelry. Like, I don't even think that that should even be called snitching. No, it's snitching. Well, why, Because though? he was trying to be associated with that those people, and in that culture, those are the rules. You know what I mean? So the fact that he's even adopting that culture, like, mm-hmm. it's snitching. But here's the other thing. People who are street dudes, they snitch, too. The toughest dudes be snitching. Bro, and, the, and, the, and this is black people. This is mafia people. People don't be wanting to go to jail. Because at the end of the day, when you're sitting in that jail cell and you know you can't go home, you're like, man, Roger did it. Yeah. <laughs> like, why should he be out here just living his best life? <laughs> you here, too. Oh, you're going to give me 10 years. Just give us all three. Whatever <laughs> reason that made you say Roger specifically <laughs> made that story a hundred times fun. Then it was Roger. Okay? I'm not going to do this. No. It's I would snitch in a heartbeat. I would it, snitch on you. What? Mm-hmm. Why are you telling all me? Why you do these? I don't want to go to jail. We no, don't I don't think we'd be ever out here doing things that would put us in jail. But if we did, you better not be telling. No, I would. If it was me or you, I'll snitch. I got kids. I just don't like being in closed rooms like that long. Like, listen, we were, I was in the gym this morning. And it was, first of all, I need to do better at looking at the hotels, the, the travel. Yeah, I thought you were trying to say a few times. Well, I mean, it was all oh, in. that one over there. Oh, okay. Like, it ain't. There's no... It was Slim Pickens. Slim Pickens, but when the gym... It's slim Pickens. <laughs> when the gym has a carpeted floor, you Bro, know it's you know it And it This was, gym was like a sauna, and Memphis is so humid. By itself. It is hot, and the air is thick, mm-hmm. and there was no air coming, and Greg had me doing all these stupid, really hard workout things. Like, mm-hmm. I couldn't even jump rope because the ceiling was too low. Mm-hmm. So he was like, we're going to do this. And it was like... Way harder than jump rope. And I was like, hey, man, I kind of have my own thing. I, I kind of came down there by myself. I was hoping nobody was here <laughs> so I could do things at my own pace. Nah, he had these. I mean, this thing, like, simple movement was, like, stupid hard. It was super hot. And that's why I want to just be fat. Side note, man. I've been really taking this workout thing seriously, man. You inspire a lot of people. My homegirl DM me. Uh, we have a group chat on Instagram. And she was like, man, Doughboy's workout inspiration. You amaze me because you are so much like me about being on or off stuff. <laughs> I'm a red light or a green light. You are literally snacking on broccoli florets mm-hmm. right now. I run on, bro. When we came back from uh, the end of the tour, you were eating hot wings from 7-Eleven <laughs> and six energy drinks. There's just no in between with you. But see, that's the thing. Like That's the way that I am. Either I was drinking a fifth of Hennessy every day or I haven't touched alcohol. No alcohol. I almost had two years. We're going to go for your anniversary because Del Frisco's is not fire in LA. No. Tell me about that experience. We got to go to Charlotte. We got to fly to Charlotte. Tell me Del Frisco's experience. This Wait, was kind of I tough. was in the room when you... They don't know. We want to do this online? We, I think we did it. Do we do this online? Yeah. Well, side up. Oh, well, we actually don't have to rehash that. But I just thought that was just... Because we, we were speaking on Del Frisco's. We should like, go back to Nobu with an attitude. I never been in Nobu. That's what I knew. No, man, hey, I don't got hey, no money like no, that. No, that's that's what, what I knew. Talking about? That's what I knew. Kevin loved me as a friend. <laughs> we went to and Nobu. You knew that Kevin didn't know how to do math. <laughs> we went to Nobu, and it was me, him, and Melissa and the kids. When I tell you, I accidentally peeked over at, at what that check was. <laughs> Kevin's my friend for life. <laughs> so, to that. Speaking of rappers that were having the biggest comeback of the year. And then they went to jail and then got out of jail and gained 50 pounds because they stopped drinking lean. Soldier Boy. He gained 50 pounds? Is there you a picture? gained weight, yeah. So look, so look. Soldier look different. Hold on a second. My wife just randomly played. She went to a new hairstyle. She just randomly texted me. This salon is playing Anita Baker. Your mom should be charged with child abuse for not exposing you to Anita Baker. <laughs> look at so look at look at look at Soldier. He yeah, fro? Yeah. He doesn't look like he gained 50 pounds. Oh, no, his face. (laughs) So, basically... When I met him, he was really nice. Someone said Big Draco, literally. (laughs) 
the name Draco. <laughs> Chef Jessica really Williams. Nice. But that's the thing. So um, you gain weight. When you're doing drugs or when you're drinking or just abusing substances, when you what you don't know eat, about doing drugs. I know about alcohol and that was a controlled substance. I you remember what, is alcohol considered a controlled substance? Absolutely. I, I don't know drugs. if it's considered a controlled substance, but it's What does that mean abuse. controlled substance? I don't know. But in any event, I gained right back, no, I wanna know. I literally I wanna know. That means like you could you means. could at least legally buy it? No, it should that. I don't know. Or the opposite. I'm trying to find their answers. <laughs> I'm sure somebody in the right pack knows. Narcotics. Prescribed medication. Narcotics. Oh, okay. So alcohol. Oh, like controlled, like regulated. So like. It's like heroin though. Is not over the counter. What's over the counter? Well, controlled oh, must mean somebody has over to the counter, right? So like a pharmacist or a. So that would think it's controlled. But even weed, so you get picked up with heroin, it, it, it's it, you get caught, you get you can get charged with possession of controlled substance. But there's nobody that would control it and give it out legally. I don't All right, know. Okay, here we go. We'll Maddie, this hair on. Drug or chemical whose manufacturer possession or use is regulated by government, such as illicitly used drugs or prescription medications that are designated by law. Okay, so alcohol is not a controlled substance, but it was something that I abused, and that was my D. We call this controlled in liquid. Re- yeah, what we call what we call it in, in rehab is called DOC, your drug of choice. So mm. when I was heavy into drinking, I never ate. So when I went to rehab, I went to rehab. I was like two eighty. I came out three fifteen. I was only there for thirty days. You gain you weight because now put you start on eating. weight and, and take drop off. it in no time. It's you. By the time the tour ended, you had put on thirty pounds. I was back up to three hundred seven. And now you have dropped. Go back in the two seventy. How? Because <laughs> I'm off where I'm on. But look what I was doing. When we was on the trip, it was a point where I was, could you ever like be knowing you're doing bad, but then somebody tells you and you get irritated? Mm. I got irritated with Jay and his wife because they were just like, hey man, I haven't seen you drink any water. You think like eight sodas, man. You might want to shut up and mind your business. <laughs> so I was You doing, were also remember, having ice cream all the I was the double day. fisting because you know what I did. And that's why I be telling you, let me tell you something. I'm your friend and I care about you. Let me, let me set up and tell you this. As your friend, you have got to stop this one thing and this is the thing that i know trips you up because it tripped me up for 40 years stop making eating healthy such an arduous experience it will make you resent it it will make you hate it and you will mess up what i was doing when we were on tour the most unhealthiest thing ever i was drinking a bunch of juice protein shakes of course i'm losing but i'm not eating food so then when i stopped oh baby (laughs) i ate everything (laughs) So that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, when we were at Walmart yesterday, you're just like, I, I can see you just... Not, I know, but you were like getting the tuna, and you're Greg, like, I gotta Greg, eat this Greg tuna. Greg asked me to get a packet of bro, dry I'm, tuna. I'm, I'm I telling ate you, some. there is different... Uh, I ate some of that. I ate some too. It's disgusting, and you don't want to eat it. That's what my, my the one thing my trainer taught me. He's like, dude, you gotta eat. You just gotta eat the right food. Bro, I be eating chicken. I be eating steak. I be eating brown rice. I eat more now than I've ever eaten, and I'm dropping weight. Greg told me this, and it's so true. Your body... When you're working out, mm-hmm. if you're not eating right, your body won't burn the fat. And exactly. And it'll hold on to everything you eat. So yeah. I'm telling you, bro. I eat. I just didn't want pro. I didn't want a packet of tuna. But I, I'm just saying I'm offering this advice to you because I see that you suffer some of the things that oh, I Oh, yeah. And so now that, like, I changed my attitude about food, I get to eat all the time. I just, and healthy food ain't got to just be, you know, disgusting stuff. Like, I be eating fruit. I be drinking water. I be living my best I got life. rice cakes. Yum. See, I don't do that. I, I go for the stuff that I like. Chocolate, I like rice cakes, though. Okay, yeah, I don't like rice cakes, but, like, I do, like, fruits. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Back to Soulja Boy. Okay. How did dropping lean have him gain 50 pounds? Because you, drinking lean kills your appetite. You don't eat. Uh, your body responds to drugs. Ah. Uh, and you stop eating. So, like, in the height of my alcoholism, I would drink a fifth a night and... Rarely ever. Remember when I used to go to lunch and I eat like two bites of food? Yes. Because my body was, was, a, was always liquor in my stomach. Really? So I was rejecting food. So then when they put Nobody you... like, no more of this. More exactly. Of this. So, so then when I got to a controlled environment, rehab, then they regulate you, then they feed you, and then you drink water, and then you don't drink alcohol, then your body's like, <gasps> bring this food in here. We haven't. We got to hold on to this. Yeah. We ain't been getting this. And so it's just a whole thing. So I want that for you, man. Just because I think... Eating healthy, because I, I actually think I've cracked the code on getting in shape. Not that I'm in shape yet, but I think that the wrong thing to do is set it up like you're going to hate it. 
Like I'm gonna have to eat food I don't wanna eat. I'm gonna have to do workouts I don't wanna do. I'm gonna sweat all the time, it's gonna hurt. Mm -hmm. Mentally, you're not gonna wanna do that. You'll do it and your willpower will get you through it for a little bit, then you'll fall off. Oh, you don't to get to be excited about going to the gym. I, key, new workout shoes. Really? Everything starts from your feet. If you got cheap shoes on mm -hmm. that I have from Marshalls, you're talking about me, though. No, yeah, well, I mean, we're but so, so I'm saying things like spoke. just having having good support on your feet. So they mentally, just, though. Yeah, but mentally, no. Oh, I have, because your feet were hurting, you exactly, didn't want to work out. I want to work out. But uh, the good thing that I have with my trainer is just explaining him, like, bro, I, I I like doing, I like different variations. I don't like coming in here and feeling like I'm just failing all the time. So my trainer just pays attention to what I'm doing. So he don't give me a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna just fail. Now he'll give me stuff that's relatively easy. We master it, then he'll up the tempo. Like he. He's very attentive to what You're I good. do. I work out so, so yeah, so I don't like going there and just going there and do a bunch of stuff I can't do to go out undefeated. Like no. Ah, oh, that's smart. You're growing in your mind. And so like now, like I was lifting weights on Instagram with my shirt off today. Side note, this is the other thing that was bothering me. And then we can get ready to wrap it up so I know some time to go. I hate that people always feel the need to say stuff. And what I mean by that is it's so difficult. For me to work Hold out. Hold on, can, can you repeat and that? I just, I didn't know if I heard it. Clearly. I hate it when people say stuff. Okay. Let me, let me give you some context as to what I mean. You, I don't like it. No, but like, you said feel the need to like just say, say something. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, you said I do that No. <laughs> this is your well, whole thing. Me. Shut up, you. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so, 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 so listen, so I'm losing weight and it's so hard for me <laughs> to drink water to eat right, and to get to my goal of 225, which I will do before the end of the year. Let's do it. It's hard. Let's do it. You know what people, you know what about, I have about 60, 70 comments on, on, my, on my page. You shouldn't have your shirt off. Yo, man, but all that extra skin, though. Oh, uh, man, what you gonna do about that extra skin? Let me tell you something. Shut up! Let me tell you something. This is the internet. Hmm? You cannot win. Never. You'll tell never you, win. I'm gonna give you a couple examples. One, my beard. Hmm? When it was first starting to grow, nobody knew I was growing because I had razor bumps. Mm -hmm. Every comment, you don't even have no beard. That ain't number dirt. That ain't number dirt. You don't have no beard. Shave it off, right? Well, this was like I kind of like it. Oh, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> That's all you then when it started growing in, man, it's it's growing, but it ain't gonna fill in. It ain't never gonna fill in. Patch, patch is patch. It's never gonna fill in. Then it fills in. Then it fills in. Now I have like a little alopecia right here. My brother was like, grow it to your neck. And I was like, no, there's a big hole in there. <laughs> so when I need a haircut, you can always tell. Usually from now, if I have my face like this, you can't tell. Mm -hmm. So then it came and like, it's filling in, but it ain't thick. It's, it's like, filling in, but it ain't thick. And then, now most of the comments are like, man, the beard looks good. I just right? don't understand. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He's not done. We'll go back. This is just one example of like, literally everybody will say the same thing until you get where you want, mm -hmm. right? Now, if you get, when you finally get to 225 mm -hmm. and your skin, whatever it looks like, People still have something to say. So this girl I follow on Instagram, she lost stupid weight fast. Like, way faster than you. I don't know. It was, like, unhealthy. She was going to the hospital. It was, like, a whole thing. Okay. Like, she had, had a baby and then lost crazy weight. Mm -hmm. So to, so she was going to have a, um, or she was having a tummy tuck. Okay. So to get ahead of future negative comments, she was like, I'm going to tell y'all up, up front that I'm having a tummy tuck. Because I don't want people to be like, she probably had work done. She probably had work done. So I'm going to tell y'all right now, I'm having work done. She doesn't. Then she's like, I'm going to prove to you that I'm real. I'm going to show you the process of me going to the hospital, blah, 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 blah. She ended up putting her cut up stomach with like her skin on the top and like fat under. She put a picture of that on Instagram to prove to people that she had uh, a tummy tuck. Right. And I'm like, fam. We should not have to go through these links. You don't owe these people nothing. 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 Whether right. they know or not. Shut these up. These are strangers. <laughs> that, and now I've never looked like, at it like that until this moment. They are strangers. No, this I this, don't this know person's these child's going to see this one day. Huh? This person's child's yes. going to see this one day. Nice. Like. <laughs> And I, All to prove point, a point like, to people you don't, you doing? won't ever know. You never, and if you do met. meet them, they will never even say the stuff they said about you in comment. Never. Because there's been so many times with this NFL or NBA player, mm -hmm. or Carmelo is the NBA player. Mm -hmm. Dude said something funny to him uh, or about him. Mm -hmm. And Carmelo was like, boy, if you don't shut your glazed donut face up. <laughs> that sounds right? hilarious. Carmelo, the <laughs> glazed donut face is and, funny. Flawless victory. <laughs> then he blocked him. 
Carmella blocked the person. Mm-hmm. The dude was like, Did bro. Did block me? No, I, it's just making my mouth <laughs> dry. Um, that's my, it's like. <laughs> he said it with a handful of black. I forgot my, bro- my, my water. Yeah. So then the dude's like, man, I'm your, I'm your number one fan. Why would you say that to me? Bro, he had he had disrespected Carmelo. Right. And then he the dude pulled all, all his tweets up positively about Carmelo, but none. Did Carmelo see those? No. I did that recently with somebody yeah. in the picture. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> you got up. You know, I did that like and I, I apologize. So mm-hmm. what, what happened was somebody <laughs> has said a comment and I get sensitive because oh, this is my life. My God. Like I really quit a job to, to start a podcast with my best friend and it worked. So I'm I'm very sensitive to that fact. And the young lady has said, uh, oh I'm so this show she's what she said was um, watching the old clips that you guys just put up, show me how funny this show used to be. Now I don't like it, and Doughboy's always so extra. So of course, I shouldn't have responded. You jumped. I did. I mean, you were. A and then, and then when she, I was like, "Hey, well, you know, sorry, we'll try to do our thing, but hopefully, you can find the content that you like." You know, Don't so, like, 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 And then she responded, and she said something very interesting. She was like, "Yeah, da da da, whatever." But then she says. She said, what I find interesting is that I've left you a myriad of positive comments and you never responded to one, and this is the one that you respond to. I hate that I'm wired like that. I hate that I only like see that. the the bad. I'm when trying you're performing to... and you're killing, if there's one person not laughing, you like, what, what? only see that person. That's human nature. That's just wanting to be liked, too, though. Why would you bite of your joy? Yeah. Learn that, on, learn that on uh, Talkspace. Look at you out here just furthering yourself. Josh's been Talkspacing. He has. Check, try Talkspace, bro. Josh has been in different spaces that Vera grew in. He's not the same young whippersnapper as he was before. Like, matter of fact, man, go get, hop in your car real quick, man. Grab your, your registration out of the glove box. Oh, I want to be in the comments for a second before you leave. <laughs> do, 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 do. I don't care if you if you if you drop the two twenty five, you have loose skin. Be out there. With loose but see, that's skin. my thing. I can't. When I do things, it's just like we're trying to stay sober. Like, the thought of me staying sober for the rest of my life haunts me and makes me think I'm never going to make it. That's why I just focus on today. I don't care about... And also, you got to give yourself credit. For just... No matter what it's hard you to just stay in the life, game. The fact that you are sober yeah. for nearly two years. Bro. Forget it. Whether, and I want you to be as healthy, the healthiest version of yourself that you want to be and you deserve to be. But you are sober. You know the crazy thing about that? I was looking up, because I had just put Doughboy Sober in um, in YouTube one day, just randomly. And I put up like eight or nine videos of me and you talking. It was like 11 days sober, 18 days sober. Doughboy fell off the wagon. I like, have this videos is... <laughs> in, in my page that are private of you sober that I hadn't, because I was releasing so many, I hadn't had a chance to make public. And then you were unsober. So I was just like, ah. So just the fact that it's been a two-year process is something that's... That feels like so long ago when we were sitting in that Culver City... Office. Over at, uh, at Jerry's. Jerry's. At Jerry's. Punch. Grabbing, grabbing unhealthy food and talking about. I had stitches in my lip. Remember because I busted my mouth? And you, you. Is that the horny goat weed one? Mm-hmm. For Shake Viagra? You really took that, right? Yeah, but I wasn't I wasn't alcohol induced at all. That so was just. That was just me trying to have a bet because I tried. <laughs> so basically what it was is I was, I, I was hanging out with a chick that we had already been into it. And I was two men in the gift cutting. So she kind of said something like, yeah, you're going to need to redeem yourself. I said, all right. I wasn't drinking at the time. And with me drinking was, I think in my mind, it helped me sexually. I just was kind of just different. So I wasn't drinking at the time. So I was like, all right, I go to the, to the, <laughs> I go to the liquor store to get something that wasn't liquor related. Then I go to the, to the, uh, to the register and I see the little blue pill. It has a blue rhino on it. I'm like, man, what? Because I had always seen it. I'm like, man, what is this? He was like, oh, my friend. He said, you go all night. I said, all night. He said, you go all night, my friend. I said, what? And he said, you go all night. He was like, normally $20. I give you for 15 Money back guarantee. How is he what? cutting a deal? Hold on. Hold on. Right. <laughs> How is he cutting a deal on a retail you price? You know they cutting the deal when they say out the door. Whenever somebody says out the door, it's like, oh, it's, I got to get it. Out the door? He's like, $15 out the door. So I go. I take the pill, go out, bang, poof, great performance. She leaves, everything was cool. I get home, I remember I was, I was drinking some high C, dipping a fruit roll up in it. Really <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. You were yeah. dipping a fruit in high C and punch? Yes, because it was cold. Remember, like how I do it, it makes it ice up? So I'm doing that. All I remember is I'm like, okay, I'm sitting on the, on the couch. I had forgot I even took the pill. I stand up, the room starts moving. Next thing I know, I'm on the floor and I'm just like, and I'm looking at the ground and I feel my lip like, and I'm just like, and I look down, there's blood on the floor. I'm just like, 
What? I don't even remember any. I've, I've, I've only passed out twice in my life. And so I'm like, and I like, I feel my lip and it's split bad. So I'm just like, so then I go and I look in the mirror. Literally, my lip is split going two directions. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't be fat and ugly. I thought I was going to disfigure That's me. the first thing you like, think? No, it's, I was like, it's over for me. It's over. I, I had the cute thing going right on. This is over with. <laughs> so then I called I called my mom randomly. I'm like, mom, <laughs> mind you. And now I still got this, this pill that I took in the back of my head. But now I'm like, no one can know of this. So I'm like, mom, I just passed out. She's like, well, call the hospital. Call the hospital. They call 911. They come. They come and get me. They put me. I'm like, man, I passed out. I don't know what happened. Da-da-da. Oh, you're lucky you had insurance at this time, bro. That's like, five. Any drugs or anything? I'm like, no. <laughs> get all the way to the hospital. They're running tests. And we had to get eight stitches in my lip. That's why I, I had the stitches. So now they're they're concerned because they're like, you don't have any history of this. You don't have nothing. So we're talking we're like, well, we don't feel comfortable discharging you. And then they start talking about like, well, if you're passed now, we got to let the DMV know because all these are they like, if, is it diabetes? They're like, we got. And so I was like, I took a, I was like, I took a fake blue rhino from the liquor store. They're, the nurse literally chuckled. She was like, <laughs> <laughs> Did she, she went, really? She really? She was like, she was like, sir. Okay. So she went. and She talked to the doctor, and she came back. She was like, okay. Thank you for telling us. Those things are dangerous. They they accelerate your heart. Da, da, da. Oh, is she, that what it is? That's that what what it was the pill that did it to me. So what is it? It just I don't I don't know what it was about it, yeah. but it just sends a lot of information to different places in your oh, body. It's like penis heart, yeah. brain heart, <laughs> heart beat, uh, yeah. So my arm. But that was the thing. So like your penis heart, your blood vessels are. <laughs> and it was messed up because I had to just. They kept asking me. I was like, no, oh, no, and then I was just like. So you only told the truth because you realized I didn't want to sit there and take my test. Was more, it was going to be more of a thing, so I, was like, I had to cut bait. So well, luckily, I was going to say you had that all death insurance at that point. Luckily, man, that insurance was great. It was. That, that was really phenomenal. was in the those, those ambulances were like five bands off. Oh, yeah, I'm just exactly. getting in, bro. I'm walking. The only person I've ever met that actually bought one of those. I didn't what? think anybody ever bought those. What the blue rhinos? The stuff in the gas station. Well, he got yeah. a deal on it. I mean, it's out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. We could talk all day, but we have to get off because Kevin needs to go take a nappy poop. We got to get ready for the show. Ready for the show. But thank you guys for always rocking with us. We love you. <laughs> Peace. We'll see y'all next, <laughs> next week. <laughs> Dude, don't.